All right, so hey guys, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at one of the new PCs that I've just kind of started reviewing. And it comes from a company called Veldstorm PCs. And they are one of the newer companies that are out there selling gaming PCs on both Amazon Newegg, and they also do sell it through their own site. So yeah, let's get into it. So Veldstorm sells PCs on both Amazon and on Newegg. Now Veldstorm is a system integrator, so that technically means that they don't make any of these parts themselves. Have you guys seen like Digital Storms or Build Redux or Origin PCs? All those companies pretty much just buy the components. So this is like an Asus graphics card. They just buy the components, throw them all in there, and just kind of build the system themselves. They don't customize any of their own parts and stuff like that. So these are gonna be pretty much just the same aftermarket parts that you're gonna find on building either your own system or just buying any other system online. Now what Veldstorm does try to do is try to go for that kind of higher end tier of quality and higher end tier of performance for a lot of their builds. As you guys can kind of see on here, um, you know, their most of their stuff is around the $2,000 plus range and they have some pretty exotic cases, some different kind of cooling techniques some different form factors and stuff like that. But let's kind of get into the actual review. So the model that they sent me was the Veldstorm Galax CTO SFX Gaming PC. And this system is going for $1,800. And then as you guys can see here, I've got this PC part picker list pulled up. Um, it's got a Ryzen 7 5800X, a Game DS AIO liquid cooler, a ASRock B550 board, 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory, a Seagate Barracuda compute two terabyte hard drive, a 500 gigabyte SSD, a RTX 3060. It's actually the RTX 3060 Asus KO edition. Then next we have the Lian Lee 011 Dynamic for the case. It's one of my favorite cases, but this is the mini version. So it's not gonna be nearly as tall and nearly as spacious. Um, so that's kind of where this is getting the small form factor build here. And then you're also getting a Lian Lee SP750 watt 80 plus gold SFX power supply unit. And then we have a TP-Link Gigabit Ethernet PCIe by one network adapter. Um, the speeds on this thing are absolutely insane. I definitely wouldn't say they're gigabit worthy. I max it out at around 100 megabits per second on this particular one. I might have the wrong model on here listed if there is a lower spec one that you can end up getting. Uh, but my network can usually get up to around 250 to 300 megabits per second uh, on pretty much all of my machines. And this one, I could really only get up to around that 100 megabit per second download speed so there's that and it also comes with six 120 millimeter lian lee uni fans so that's the part list and if you guys take a look at the price down here at the bottom of it it's going for 530 dollars and that's actually i think a fairly decent price point you're within that 300 dollars price range difference between you building the system yourself and then putting the whole thing together for you. So now that we know that the pricing looks actually fairly okay on this system, let's take a look at the packaging and kind of the internal build quality of the system. So overall packaging was really great with this system. They double boxed it, put as much styrofoam as I think I've ever seen in one of these systems. Um, they were securing the GPU and the AIO cooler in there. They put a bunch of bubble wrap around the whole system, pretty much just making sure that this system had pretty much no chance of getting damaged within shipping. And the funny thing was, is when I was emailing uh, one of their reps, I think it was their marketing rep back and forth, um, they were like, okay, maybe don't talk about the packaging on this because we're still kind of finalizing. We haven't got like our own custom box and everything like that out yet. And I was fully expecting for the packaging just to be the Lee and Lee case box and this thing just having some styrofoam in it. It wasn't even close to that. Um, I honestly think that they do a really, really good job with the packaging that they have now. If they really do feel like they need to spend the extra money on having you know, a custom box and stuff like that, I guess they can go with that. But if that is really significantly driving up the cost on each of their PCs, honestly, sticking with the stuff that they have right now is more than enough for pretty much all their PCs that they have. I don't think any customer is gonna be upset with the level of packaging and protection that they gave with these PCs. And just for the fact of having a custom box and I guess making the unboxing experience look a little bit better I don't think that that's necessarily worth it if you are gonna be driving up the price of the overall system just to compensate for the extra money that you're spending on that higher tier of packaging so Veldstorm, again, I think they did a really good job with that packaging, a whole component of it. So yeah, again, packaging, A plus on that, really good job with that. Now, when it comes to cable management on this system, this is kind of another thing. I, I don't really take a huge point of account into unless you are really spending a huge premium on the PC. 
Cable management is fine on the system, as you guys can see here. They try to do as much zip down ties as they possibly can. With this power supply, these cables aren't necessarily um, like kept together, so it is kind of hard to keep them all together. And we'll kind of get into why right now I'm not gonna be showing any shots of the cable management because it's not really representative of their actual cable management that came in the system. But pretty much the cable management in the system is fine. Um, this case is fairly easy to cable manage and they tied down everything they possibly could and made sure that, you know, if anything was sticking out, they, you know, you could get the side panel and everything back on. Um, considering the amount of RGB boxes that they had back there for the AIO cooler and for the fans um, and, you know, that fan hub and everything like that, it, it was actually a, a lot better of a quality than I originally thought was gonna be able to happen in the system. So again, I'd say, you know, an A or a B plus on the cable management side of the system. Now, I know we already went all over the specs here, but I honestly think that part selection is one of the biggest things when it comes to building a PC. Because I think you can kind of design an aesthetic and you can kind of design a price point that you wanna hit. But picking the right parts to go within that aesthetic and within that price range is, is fairly hard to do. Um, and I think that they actually do a fairly good job at it. So the Ryzen 7 5800X is a great overall CPU, no matter what you're gonna do, gaming, creative workloads, it's gonna be a beast in pretty much everything. Now it's not that expensive of a CPU, it's really only $300 while this system is costing $1,800. And that CPU to overall cost ratio isn't the best. You are filling it out with a lot of other high-end products. So one of the main things that I saw when I opened up the system was how good of a motherboard that was in this system. I really wasn't expecting one of the motherboards from the pictures on the Amazon website to be in here because that's just not something that happens with a lot of these companies. They don't end up putting, you know, the high-end motherboard that you see in all the pictures. They just put in, you know, some lower tier B550 board or some like A520 board that, you know, they can get for fairly cheap and it just does what they need it to do. This was, you know, a fairly nice high quality $150 ASRock B550 board. It's got, you know, pretty cool RGB lighting. It's got great VRMs, uh, great front panel connectivity, it even has a debug error code readout. So if anything does end up happening with this system, you're gonna be able to pretty much just look up it in the manual that's provided in the box so that you guys can pretty much just see what's going wrong with the system. Again, it's one of those high tier, fully featured motherboards that I really like to see in most systems. And I really wasn't expecting to see it in here and you know it was a pretty pleasant surprise memory is also great um you know i'd always like to see 3600 megahertz when i'm running an amd ryzen platform but 3200 megahertz is fine and the capacity there is is good i think 32 gigabytes is, is kind of starting to become a standard if you're spending more than 1500 dollars on a system just because most of the time if you are spending more than 1500 dollars on a system you're probably not just going to be gaming on it you're most likely probably going to be doing some creative workloads or something else that might start to utilize a little bit more of that memory space. Now the storage configuration is, is not really much to really talk about. Again, it's just a 500 gigabyte SSD and a two terabyte hard drive. I'm not a huge fan of hard drives. Again, like if you can just take out the hard drive and put in a higher capacity SSD, that's my preference. And unless you really do need cheap bulk storage, they're really not that much better than, you know, just a fairly cheap SSD. Now when it comes to the GPU, like I stated before, this is an A ASUS RTX 3060 KO edition GPU. Um, it's a fairly good one. Dude, this thing runs super, super cool. We'll have some gaming benchmarks up here in a second. Uh, but this is one of the better GPUs that have came out this year. And again, Asus is just one of my favorites when it comes to pretty much anything that they make. Pretty much all their graphics cards are super high quality and their cooling systems make sure that this thing stays nice and quiet. And it sits right around 70 to 68 degrees while gaming. Um, so again, absolutely amazing graphics card. And then for the rest of the system, I mean, like the case and the case fans, again, are super high quality. This is not a cheap case. This is like a $120, $130 case. Power Power supply is also a really decent power supply. It is fairly loud if you start to push all the processors on this system, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's a 750 watt 80 plus gold. It is a small form factor power supply. So that does mean, you know, it doesn't have as much space to cool all those components. So that makes sense on why the fan is spinning up a little bit louder than you might like it to. But again, you know, wearing headphones pretty much just mitigates that entire downside. Now the Wi-Fi adapter on here is, is a nice add-on. Um, again, it's like 15 bucks. So, you know, it's nice to have if people don't have, you know, a wired internet connection. And that's nice for me because I don't have a wired internet connection up to this room that I usually shoot all my videos in. So I have a couple Wi-Fi adapters of my own, but it was nice for it to be in the system already. So I didn't really have 
have to grab one of mine and throw it in here and do all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's probably gonna be nice for a lot of people who don't necessarily have a Wi-Fi adapter that they can just kind of throw into here. It's not gonna be great for downloading a ton of data and uploading a ton of data. So if you are doing stuff like YouTube and stuff like that, it might not be the best if you're trying to do that stuff over Wi-Fi, if you're doing like streaming and stuff like that, um, you most likely are gonna want to run this system with an ethernet connection. Now let's talk about the fans here because these were kind of a, a big contention point for me right here. So we have six Lian Li Uni fans um, in this system and they are really good, expensive, high quality fans. And they are good fans. They, when they run at low RPMs, they're pretty much dead silent. They're running right now and like I can't even hear them. The problem with these fans is something that I'm gonna get into here a little bit more is the absolute garbage software that Lian Li puts in with these fans. Um, the main way that you're gonna control these fans effectively is to use the Lian Li L3 Connect software. And it is probably, out of all of the software that I have ever used, which I've used some pretty garbage fan control and RGB lighting software, this has to take the cake for the worst software I think I've ever seen. Um, the fan ramps are, are, are pretty delayed. So even if anything ends up getting hot, these fans take a second to, to start, you know, kicking up, which isn't great. Like I want my fans to be ex pretty responsive because that's gonna be a difference of between my CPU peaking up to 90 degrees Celsius if it's hitting a straight, like a hard workload straight away. If my fans don't kick in for, you know, 30 seconds till after it's already hitting like its peak temperature, like what's the point of that? It's already thermal throttling. Like I, I needed my fans turned on yesterday. So there's that. Also the terrible reporting, the ability to just like kind of get the thing up and working. And the sad thing was is that this wasn't even installed with the PC. Like the fans themselves were just kept on quiet and the quiet preset for these fans literally just does not let them ramp. They sit at like 800 RPM static and they never go up. So that was a huge problem because the CPU fans are those Lian Li fans. So this CPU was peaking up to that 90 to 100 degrees Celsius just because they never ran. And this 5800X pulls down 130 watts like it's nothing. So yeah, that was not even close to enough to cool this CPU. And again, the fact that this software wasn't pre-installed on the system, yes, I, I know, understand that, that Pre-installing a lot of software is not great with some systems, right? You don't want to have those antiviruses. You don't want to have like some of these, these dumb things that these companies put on because they think it's either going to be helpful or they get a kickback for it because, you know, the company contacted them about putting their software on their PCs so that customers are either forced to kind of just like look at it and then have to like wait to uninstall it and just kind of like see all the features like Norton and all that stuff. But with software that directly impacts the performance of your system, I definitely think that that should be like a thing that should always be on any pre-built system because for people who don't necessarily understand how computers work they wouldn't know that you have to install software in order to modify your fan curves right like if someone just got this got the cooler and everything like that and they realize that their cpu is peaking at 100 degrees just because their fan curves aren't ramping up like yeah they're like yeah it's quiet but it, it's thermal throttling like crazy and it could be fixed just by literally installing some software. The software is not great. Again, Lee and Lee, you guys suck butt for, for doing like this bad of a job on just fan software. But I definitely think Velstorm could have just installed it just so that it makes it a little bit easier for people to be able to control their fan curve. Now this brings us on to our next problem. And this was the biggest downfall of this system. And I think it is one of the biggest problems I have ever seen in a pre-built computer. And that is this AIO. So you guys might be wondering why is there a Corsair AIO in here when I clearly show a game DS1 here in the PC part picker list and there's clearly another AIO that's sitting out here. Well, if you guys watched my latest video talking about um, liquid coolers versus air coolers, you might have noticed that there was this exact CPU cooler in here that had a leak in it. And that is exactly what happened with the system. So originally when I got the system, I had that huge problem of the CPU overheating, realized that there was, you know, no fan curve added. And then once I got the fan curve up, I just literally just put it at the max RPM, which is 2000 RPM for these fans. There was still, you know, crazy thermal throttling on this CPU. And I'm like, what the heck is happening? So, you know, I started going through as many different software level things. If I can kind of like open up the case, I took off all the side panels, seeing if that was the issue. 
Eventually, I took off the CPU cooler just to see if, you know, there was no thermal paste, if they forgot to put thermal paste on there, you know, that, that would suck. When I opened it up and realized that there is a ton of fluid just sitting on top of the CPU IHS. And what ended up happening was this particular CPU cooler has a leak in the base plate. And that ended up causing a leak of water to get all over the top of the CPU. And you know, all the thermal paste got kind of got muddled around and stuff like that. It was just not a good time. And I talked about this in my AIO versus water cooling video, but this could have been absolutely disastrous. If any more fluid got on there, like it was pretty much close to overflowing over the side of the CPU. And if that would have happened, it could have gotten the CPU socket, killing the motherboard, the CPU, and who knows what else. It could have killed memory. Like, needless to say, this is a terrible thing to happen. A leak from an AIO from a pre-built PC company is probably one of the worst things possible. They did do validation, and I think that's fine. But if they would have sat and done a little bit longer validation, maybe for 48 hours, I don't know how long their validation process is, but if they would have sat for 48 hours and just let this thing go the way that they had it and just made sure to check on CPU temperatures, put on like a CPU burner from Firmark, which is what I do on all my test systems, and just let it run and see that this thing is peaking like crazy, you should have noticed that something was wrong. Um, this CPU should not be peaking at that high of temperatures with this kind of CPU cooler, especially with an AIO. And if that would have happened, that would have resolved this entire issue. Again, while VestStorm is partially to blame for not finding this problem in doing their testing, GameDS, which is the manufacturer for this AIO, is also playing a pretty big role to blame here. They didn't do all the necessary quality assurance testing to make sure that this CPU cooler wouldn't leak, which is like the worst thing that could possibly happen on a CPU cooler is a leak happening. And again, you know, that kind of sucks. You know, Velstrom doesn't make CPU coolers. This is a, a game DIOS thing, but it also kind of comes back to Velstrom. Like this isn't a high-end cooler. Game DIOS isn't known for making high-end parts. They are known for making low-end, kind of cheaper-end parts for these system integrators to use in their build so that they don't have to pay a whole lot of money for you know high-end components like the cpu cooler we have in here right now so after i sent a message to Veltstorm and i was like yeah there's a huge leak on this cpu cooler um you know this is not good right it's, it's not a good situation for anybody here um, they're like, okay, yeah, we'll send you another CPU cooler just so that I can do my review. Because at that point, I had like this tiny little dingy AMD air cooler that, yeah, it actually did get better temperatures than this broken thing. Um, but it still wasn't good enough to where I, like I could run game benchmarks and stuff like that that you guys are probably seeing on screen here. And so that kind of brings to the point, like, why wasn't this cooler in here already? If you are going to be putting in an AIO cooler in a system and you are kind of going as a premium brand, it would make sense to put in a premium AIO cooler. Maybe you don't have to spend the $160, $180 that this particular one costs, but don't spend this, like this is a $60 water cooler. Like this is not something that I would be proud to have in my system. It's not something that gives me confidence that this is gonna be reliable for the long term. Just a point of criticism here for Veltstorm. If you are gonna be doing AIO coolers, right? Like air coolers, you can kind of skimp out with going lower tier stuff. But if you are going with AIO cooler, I, I really wouldn't suggest going with these crazy low end coolers. Because if you do start having problems with them, like I mentioned in that last video, the, the downsides of an AIO cooler are much, much more disastrous than what you could possibly have on an air cooler. I know they look better and I know they look more appealing to your gamer audience. If you do want to go for that look, you have to go for something higher end because especially with these systems, it's like your bread and butter is making sure that these systems work and perform well for your customers. And if anybody else except me got this system and wouldn't have been able to diagnose it, the entire system most likely would have been cooked within the next couple of days. If this never happened, if this CPU cooler was never in there and it was originally this Corsair one or just a higher tier one like a Lian Li one, this could have been one of the best PCs that I've ever had in here when it comes to price to performance, overall quality of the system. In all around system, this would have been the best I think I've looked at in a long time. 
because they put a lot of care into the system. They picked out really great, high quality components to put in here, except for the water cooler. It's gonna last for a very long time and it's gonna perform extremely well. And I think that's something that they should stick with. If they're going as a high-end brand and they're going with you know this kind of premium product thing, they need to stick with high-end stuff. Like don't go with a $60 water cooler, go with the $130, go with the $120 water cooler. Yeah, charge the extra $40 on top of the system, that's fine. If you're promoting yourself as a premium company, you can do that as long as you're within that, you know, $300 range on top of what it is for, you know, someone to build it. And so in general, guys, for those of you watching this video, I would say that I would recommend these systems with the caveat of Velostorm, you know, committing to putting in some higher end products into their system. I honestly would not buy this exact system right now after this video launches, just because of the fact that this CPU cooler is still gonna be in there. And again, if Velostorm is also watching this video, making sure that you're putting on that Lian Lee software on here or any sort of fan control software, as long as it's on there that the user can edit it and make sure that it is, you know, adjusting correctly so that the temperatures don't get crazy hot. That's, you know, that's fairly important. That needs to be on there. But other than that, this system has been absolutely amazing. And if you guys have any other questions about it, uh, make sure to leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions on here. I'm sure Veldstorm is also gonna be in the comment section below since, you know, they said that they wanna be pretty hands-on with this particular review. And, you know, I applaud them for that. If they do wanna help out any of their customer base, that'd be great. Again, this PC and all of the others on Amazon that I'm gonna be kind of recommending um, that I think are, are fairly good Good deals i'm gonna be putting down below in the description again those are not links directly tied to veldstorms those are just through my amazon partner program so that, you know there's no money exchanging between me and veldstorm if that's you know somewhat concerning to you it's really just my amazon link and it helps me get some better stuff for the channel so i can make higher quality videos so yeah that's gonna be about it for the video again if you guys have any questions go down in the comment section below i'll be happy to answer them if you have any other sort of tech help questions that really aren't related to this we have a pc help discord server uh, that you guys can end up joining if you guys do need that help me as well as a bunch of other people apply to a bunch of your different it help solutions to hopefully figure out what is going wrong with your system um, and yeah, if you guys want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. And if you like the video, leave a like on it and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.